Welcome to today's video devotional here at Covenant Keepers Ministries. It's Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. And we are looking at the miracles of Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry. Powerful faith building words out of God's word. And so today we're looking at the withering of the fig tree. And so it's in Matthew 21 and in Mark 11. So out of Matthew 21, uh, reading verses 18 through 22, here's what the scripture says. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately the fig tree withered away. Now when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither away so soon? And Jesus answered and said to them, Surely I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, Be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And all things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Now Mark records the same story in in the 11th chapter, verses 12 through 14, and then in verses 20 through 24. <clears throat> Here's what it says. The next day when they come out of Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one see eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. In verse 20, now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, and Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. This miracle demonstrates the power and authority of Jesus over all of creation, all of nature. See, the natural order of things is in the creation of God. Being creation's author, he knows all the intricacies and makeup of everything in creation, everything in creation. He is in control and can change anything he desires according to his will. Now, accompanied by his disciples, Jesus was headed out into the town of Bethany and he was hungry. He saw a fig tree with, with leaves but no figs and he said to the tree, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. The disciples the very next day noticed that the fig tree was dried up from the roots. It had already withered away. They brought this to the master's attention. Christ proceeds to give a lesson on faith in this miracle. First, he instructs, have faith in God. Huh. Listen, Jesus was saying, you can trust my father. I want you to hear this today. You can trust the Lord God Almighty. He is faithful and trustworthy. Secondly, without being frivolous or attempting to test God, you can say to this mountain in your life to move out of the way, and if you don't doubt, but rather believe, you will have whatever you say. Jesus teaches a similar aspect concerning faith when he states concerning asking God for wisdom that one should ask in faith with no doubting. Believe what you're asking for. Then Jesus takes the teaching one step further. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Now, some of you will say, well, that, same, that sounds a whole lot like name it and claim it. Just claim it and it's yours. The difference here is that the Lord desired to eat due to hunger, found a perfectly sound tree not performing its prescribed duty. Now, it's clear that it wasn't the season for figs. You notice that? Huh. It wasn't the season for figs. So this puts us into a mystery here. And I don't know that I have an answer for it. It wasn't the season for figs. But the difference here is that the Lord desired to eat. He was hungry. And this tree wasn't performing its prescribed duty. We don't know why there was no fruit on the fig tree outside of that. It wasn't the season because there should have been, but alas, there is none. 
And Jesus simply told something in his creation that since you're not fulfilling your purpose, you have no purpose, let nothing be produced from you from now on. You know, I'm telling you, this is about his authority. You can, you can get all confused about multiple other things, but Jesus has full authority. All authority is given me in heaven and on earth. Huh. Now, just arbitrarily, us, personally, just arbitrarily desiring something to consume on our lust, the lust of our eyes, the, the lust of our life, the pride of life, to make ourselves look good, to, to look like we're spiritually strong and mature, or we're a person of great faith, is not reason for us to receive it. Sorry, it's just not. The, the reason you have and you ask and have not, James says, because you ask to consume it upon your lust. In other words, you want to look good or you want your life to look good or something like that. Although we do know that God gave the children of Israel what they wanted, what they lusted after, and then he sent leanness to their souls. I, I believe today that God allows people to to get what they've gone after, to fulfill the lust of their flesh, the lust of their eyes, and the pride of their life, to only find themselves destitute without God and living in the misery of their own luxury. Either they get a wake-up call and, and repent, or they end up telling God, you know what, I'm pretty much making it on my own. When necessary, God can plant, transplant trees, move mountains, destroy things in your way, he does this for his people because he desires for them to know him and grow in relationship with him. The fig tree wasn't working out, so it had to be removed. So that really begs a question that I need to ask myself, and I pray you'll ask yourself. Is there anything in your life that needs to be eliminated? It, is it in the way of your moving closer to God? In fact, have many of the things you've asked God for, if you could see the end result of your receiving them, would they draw you to God or away from God? This worship of man today is out of control and, and this me serving me is way out of control among Christians. Say the word to God. Say, God, I'd like to have that eliminated. It's not, it's not drawing me near to you. And I'm interested in drawing near, nearer to you. Tell God that and watch him help you eliminate that from your life. Let's pray. Father, I, I praise you today that when Jesus walked this earth, he explained to us that we needed faith in you. Help my faith to grow. And help me to eliminate all the obstacles to that growing that I have the power to eliminate. And then I ask, Holy Spirit, draw me nearer, nearer in this relationship to the living God in Christ's name. Amen. Grace and peace today. Have a fantastic day.